Asia Pacific 2021 and you're with us in the afternoon session at uh, track two where we have a number of sessions and presentations around the top around the track theme which is e-commerce retail and last mile to kick us off we have uh, we're going to be having a presentation on yet another hot topic in fact a topic that's seldom away from the headlines and that's sustainability and to talk to us about urban sustainability solutions, I'm really delighted to see that we have Jen Tan, who's a Senior Vice President and Head of Sustainable Solutions at Semcorp Industries. And Jen has had a lot of experience, especially uh, in the solar industry and in uh, working in solar projects. So I'm really happy to see Jen here today at Logisim, I believe for the first time. And yes. I will hand the st stage over to you. So all yours, Jen. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Um, th thanks very much for having me here. Today, I'm uh, here to share about sustainability uh, is our business for SEMCORP. Um, sustainability is a very big buzzword these days. Everybody is talking about it. We are actually witnessing more and more companies wanting to minimize or eradicate their carbon footprint. And SEMCORP is committed to the growing needs for such green energy. In the past, before pandemic, it could be a choice. People are less interested. The more uh, important uh, work was cost. Will it be cheaper than the usual conventional energy? Do we really need sustainable solutions? But when the pandemic struck, many people were hit with severe interruptions, interruption to business, interruption to daily lives. And we began to feel that interruptions is real. It can happen anytime, anywhere. And we know that climate change is also for real. Uh, we have seen changing in weather patterns. We have seen, um, you know, severe climate change and impact. I've seen pictures where polar bear lost, lost their eyes and all that. So if we are not careful and we don't adopt sustainable practices, 10, 20 or even 50 years down the road, our next generations will be affected. So today I'd like to share with everyone, SEMCORP uh, as a company, how do we adopt uh, sustainable solutions? How do we um, bring these to our customers and some case studies of uh, our customers using our sustainable solutions? Um, but so I will share a little bit about introduction for SEMCOP and, and some of those uh, things that um, uh, we can provide as a solution for your companies or, or you can even drop me a message in LinkedIn and I'll be happy to answer them. So just a brief introduction on SEMCOP. We are actually operating in 11 countries. We have a staff strength of 4,500. Um, we are actually 49.5% owned by Tomasic. But on the left, you see that our business uh, is really focused on providing energy and also urban solutions. In urban, we are actually a leading Asian developer. But these two um, solutions that we provide um, the biggest buzzword in, in this is really sustainability is our business. We want to provide sustainable energy and build the urban uh, landscape. So in terms of the energy portfolio that we have, um, we have uh, wind about 3.2 gigawatts of, uh, of uh, renewable energy out of our 12 uh, gigawatt portfolio, uh, mainly operating in Singapore, India, China, and UK. Um, Contributing to the Singapore Green Plan in 2030, this is extremely important as a country. If you hear the ministers, they have been talking, oh, we, we need to go green. We have the Singapore Green Plan. A couple of days ago, every uh, town council or every um, GRC, a minister is then assigned to bring sustainability to their, their, their ward and their scope and, and all that. So it's really a very important um, journey for all of us moving ahead as an individual, as a company, and as a country. So what can we do and how can we help in this? Um, of course, introduction of carbon tax is not something that we like because the cost gets passed through to us. So we need to push on renewables uh, so that we ourselves uh, also generate renewables energy. Unfortunately, in Singapore, it's really um, the only renewable that is viable is, is solar. Uh, wind turbines are too big for us. Um, there's not much um, other renewable energy source. Um, we should also embark on sustainability reporting. I think a lot of companies are going towards that. But when you do sustainability reporting, you also then have to adopt uh, the, the sustainability practices, right? 
So we need to talk about energy efficient efficiency. We need to go into EV charging and, and all that. So um, businesses are encouraged to adopt more sustainable practices. And, and this uh, moving forward, I think is a lesser of a choice. It's more of a need and uh, going towards the country and, and companies practices. Um, so some of the track record that uh, SAMCOP has, we have got a large scale floating farm that is currently under construction. Uh, you have seen it in the papers in the last two days. Um, I'm excited to bring it online in the next half of 2021. Um, we are also building a solar land um, ground mounted system in Tuas. And then we have uh, our India colleagues also building a, a plant in Rajasthan. And as part of the national program called Solar Nova, we are currently uh, constructing about 2,700 blocks uh, of solar on these roofs. We are also working very closely with companies who do not have the real estate to build a proper solar plant. You know, companies like Facebook, UBS, and Google, they are actually um, having contracts with us to procure uh, green, uh, green electrons or renewable energy certificates. Um, well, from the logistics sector, we have got quite a number of logistics customers, YCH, uh, IRAS Logistics, uh, Agility, Maple 3, Ascenders. These, these are currently our customers. I think, importantly, um, they have stringent safety requirements. During our construction, we cannot affect their logistics activities. Um, we need to ensure that... Um, we have this strong uh, expertise in PV design so that we can, um, you know, minimize the impact on the warehouse uh, warehousing profile and have zero disruption to your businesses when we construct the uh, the solar plant uh, uh, for for the logistics warehouses in Singapore. These are the other other examples of uh, uh, logistics warehouse with with solar rooftop. Uh, hopefully, one day, all the rooftops in Singapore will be powered with solar uh, for our logistics companies. Um, that's dipping, deep diving into uh, two case studies, Cash Logistics, we have a eight meg uh, total 8 megawatt solar farm, and this actually helped them to reduce the brown energy consumption. Uh, they also have immediate savings because uh, there is, um, there is uh, uh, definitely... Uh, Currently, solar energy is cheaper than what you pay through the grid, right? Um, so on the right side, you can see the, the indices of things that they have uh, avoided or they have achieved and improved. Um, YCH Logistics is another company that is, is very close to us. Um, we have a 2.8 megawatt peak system. Um, they enjoy immediate uh, cost savings as well. Um, and they also leverage on uh, SEMCOP smart solar energy systems to power their warehouse uh, in Singapore. Um, also, YCH is very close to my heart because uh, currently our office uh, with 100 member team is actually situated in their office. We also use their logistics um, trucking business. We are actually also having our um, equipment stock in their warehouse. So we have a very mutually close relationship um, here with them as our uh, logistics provider. Um, SEMCOP, uh, Urban Sustainable Solutions. Uh, SEMCOP Sustainable uh, 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 Solutions is, um, uh, we, we are able to power circular economy and decarbonization movement. Okay. Um, sorry, just give me a minute. Huh? Okay, so we have urban farming, retail electricity, digital and smart metering services. We also um, are into e-mobility, which I will evaluate a little bit later. We have a smart waste management system, um, energy management services. Um, of late, we have already started construction for rainwater harvesting. This is extremely important because water is also a very scarce resource in Singapore. Um, our, we have also shown strength and capabilities in the rooftop solar and uh, REX management system. So these are the services that we feel that is, um, is important for the sustainability journey. I'm sure not every company is able to adopt all the services, 
but one or more of these services will definitely help in the sustainable journey for Singapore. So su sustainable solutions for the logistics and su supply chain industry, I would think that rooftop solar, um, renewable energy certificates, uh, installation of EV chargers, rainwater harvesting, and solid waste management and recycling are very relevant. So you could consider one of these uh, services as a, a service for uh, from, from us or any other providers in Singapore. So EV charging capabilities, we have got a charging depot uh, with rooftop solar. We've got solar vehicle parking lots. Uh, we have got utilities solar. Okay, with this, we can have one to four hour uh, charging modes, EV charger. Um, excess unused solar can also go into high density um, batteries. We can charge a commercial, uh, a commercial fleet of vehicle. All these are low carbon mobility solutions for businesses. Um, these are just some examples of uh, existing plans for electrification of port operations and container trucking. Um, so the logistics um, uh, fleet and the taxi fleet, and you know, this is the ongoing hot topic for, for everyone uh, in Singapore uh, that is looking at sustainability. In some court, we, we have um, the four um, uh, old model. Basically, we originate deals, we, we are the owner investor. Uh, most important thing that I would like to focus here is really on the, the being an operator and optimizer. When we are operator and optimizer, it means that the quality and the safety and the durability of the plant is very important to us because our main revenue stream is uh, really dependent on the recurring revenue stream of the operations of the plant. That will mean that um, your the the asset that we start to build at your your premises will be well taken care of because if anything should happen the first one the first one to suffer will be some uh, because then our system is not optimized um how can we make solar energy uh, accessible to all companies in singapore basically um I, I think this is applicable not only to SEMCOP, but generally as a rooftop uh, provider. Um, we can you know, conduct a, a technical assessment on your premise, uh, be it desktop or, or on-site. We then have a concept and a, a proposal. And then after that, when you're okay with that, we can uh, talk about the contract, the price, and then we, there's construction and installation. For us, uh, all construction typically takes less than six months um, from the date of signing. Once the project is completed, you will start to enjoy clean energy. Um, and then you will also see the, the savings that you get from cheaper electricity. So uh, in the day when the solar is shining and you're consuming the energy, we're expecting about 10 to 20, minimally 10% uh, savings and and it can go up to 30 percent depends on the size of the roof and the you know amount of consumption so there's a lot of savings to to be um uh saved you know if you change to solar energy in the day um it's hassle free for us because um when we sign a long-term contract all maintenance um and you know uh maintenance cleaning of the panels is all taken up by the developer um, for those who don't have a roof, what then can you do? You actually can procure this thing called racks, um, where it, you know it it actually is is equivalent to a green uh, energy electron. So one megawatt of well, one megawatt hour of green energy uh, energy actually is equal to one rack. So the the racks are powered by blockchain technology, right? And then it is also RE hundred recognized, and you know there is a convenient portfolio management tool that we have so these regs are uh accountable and and you know when you have the peace of mind when you procure them uh, to declare that you're green in your sustainability reporting okay moving on from from uh solar to water um we have got you know we have changi new water plant is is our plan and in jurong island we have also got water uh design, uh, wastewater treatment and, and all that so uh, we do close root industrial water manage wastewater management uh we also do wastewater treatment and reclamation 
and we also have alternate water sourcing and as i presented just now there's rainwater harvesting so um water is very precious to us um you know there's this government initiative of safe water and all that so i think if your company has uh, got wastewater you can treat the water or you know you have enough space for rainwater harvesting uh, it is important to have a look at it you know to move towards uh, having sustainable solutions um so we have uh, integrated uh, waste solutions i mean apart from the usual big garbage truck that you see we have got this thing called easy where it's an online recyclables collection you can register and we can come and pick uh, your stuff online uh, we then can report and, uh, and have data for the recyclables um, of late, we are really moving towards um, uh, recycling education so that, you know, it starts, uh, the habit starts from when the children are young. Unfortunately, in, in today's uh, COVID context, we probably have to bring this online. Um, so having spoken about solar, waste, um, you know, uh, water and, and all that, how do we put it all together? I'm sure for the supply chain manager or the the logist the what you call the facilities manager if you have to work with different people on a different platform in a different report um i think come month end you'll probably have a very very big headache so we thought of this and we actually are thinking of uh, you know having a sustainability dashboard for energy water and waste so for customers uh, who use all three services this dashboard will then be provided to report the entire sustainability status to track uh, the company's target it can be available on the laptop or on on ipad or um, not ipad i mean uh, tablets or uh, a smartphone right so this this would be much more convenient uh, for the managers who are involved in this this reporting um well i mean having said so much about sustainability solutions and what we can offer I think it is also important to lead by example. We have gotten this Apex uh, Corporate Sustainability Award uh, last year, and then we are also named uh, Solar Power Com uh, Solar Power Company of the Year um, back in 2020 by Frost and Sullivan, right? Um, so that that is the end of my um, uh, sharing. So I hope um, with this, more companies are looking towards sustainable solutions. And you can drop us a message if you have more questions and um, queries about what I've just presented. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Um, short and sharp, but to the point. We've got a whole bunch of questions that have come in. Um, I'll ask you one that I actually asked um, earlier. What is PV design? PV design is the solar system design where you know we 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 okay in singapore we are actually at the equator right so uh, the the best uh, uh the most optimum way for the solar panels to absorb the sunlight is when it's horizontal but because um you know solar solar systems uh, need to be clean uh, clean so that we can harness the maximum energy we need to tilt it slightly still harnessing the maximum possible energy but yet it has a self-cleaning mechanism so that we don't go to the rooftops to to clean all the time and disturb and disrupt the operations of of the company so this is an example of the design the way we place the panels the way we um tuck in the cables you know the way we run the cables all this all helps to optimize the power of the system and the durability of the system that's pv design Maximum okay. power, minimum cost. Cool. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jen. We've got a question, um, which I think is something that many of us who have been listening to you want to know. What is the investment rate of return for such an installation for solar panels? You know, if I installed it on my building. So you said you can get 10 or 30 percent um, um, cost savings. So how much how would that translate into um, investment rate of return wow this is a company oh, secret, you know? <laughs> uh, but i think the the investment rate of return is not fantastic for renewable energy right because um it, it really depends on on the market you know when when um when 
energy oil prices crash energy prices crash you know and no people just don't want to adopt and okay i mean if you run a business your top priority is cost right csr and and um and uh you know sustainability sometimes can can take a back seat if people are trying to survive so in in those times um the the rate of return can be really low i mean it, it it's it's the payback period can be 12 or 14 years but in good times when you know oil prices shoot up very high 60 dollars per barrel 70 dollars per, per barrel we are still you know and then there is no i mean you know that uh in the last um, half a year, logistics costs went haywire. Per mm -hmm. container cost increased tenfold. Um, hence, the solar also affected, right? Because our cost of um, installations has gone up. So that will take a hit on the on the returns as well. But in good times when logistics is good, um, uh, the price of uh, commodities is low, you know, uh, oil price is high. I mean, then the payback period can come down to eight, eight years, seven years. So it's really uh, very volatile and 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 it's 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 very much market and uh, government incentive driven a government incentive is not uh, pertaining to singapore because singapore is very stable and 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 is very controlled right but in in the overseas market like china where they have subsidies you know in vietnam they have free in tariffs and all that so um it's very hard to tell you a fixed number what is the internal rate of return uh, for solar projects I, I can only I can only say that um, the payback periods can range between eight to 12, 14 years. Uh, it really depends. Okay, so that takes quite a bit of um, investment yeah, or fortitude to actually want to invest in this in the first place. Yeah. All right. Because eight or ten years is a pretty long time. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. And many of us who work in companies don't even last that long. <laughs> so um, you also touched on. Um, uh, government incentives. Believe it or not, we have a question all the way from Japan asking mm. that very same question. What sort of government incentives are there in place in Singapore, for example, um, for investing in solar energy? Uh, no, unfortunately, we don't have that kind of incentive in Singapore. It's uh, self-driven, it's market-driven. Government is very supportive uh, of uh, green initiatives. You know, they they ensure that they provide the platform for training, for support. Um, unfortunately, there is no incentive, but there is this incentive for not adopting green because you know you get the carbon tax for, for producing carbon. Um, you know, so so unfortunately in Singapore we don't have. Um, I've seen this in Germany and even even in Japan. I mean, a few years ago there was very strong incentives. Uh, just to spur the, the the green growth right unfortunately it's not that sustainable because it actually costs the government a lot of money um and and now i think with solar energy and even wind energy in some countries at grid parity you no longer see a lot of uh, support from the government for for such uh, in investments okay so well that's a shame yeah so for your logistics clients um, mm. You know, I'm not sure if you heard the panel before lunch, but we were on air with Rachel Kelly from Money FM. Mm -hmm. And um, we talked very briefly about greenwashing. You know, I'm sure you've heard the term. But um, so for your logistics clients, what's, what extent is solar investment a pure financial decision versus being a good corporate citizen versus um, just doing it for good marketing spiel? um okay for the logistics customers that we have right the investment is done by samcorp right samcorp uh, builds own and operate so uh, for them to get green energy from us they actually spent zero cents and the only m amount of money that is spent is the time of the facilities manager to entertain us for our construction um and that's about it and the the you know the ceo or the or the head of the company to spend time to look at the contract and sign the contract that's probably as much time and money that they spend the rest is all covered by developer like us samcorp where we procure we build we own and we operate and the only money that comes out from them is the cheaper electron that they consume right that that's um you know that much that they spend um so how do they benefit of course cheaper cost second 
if they can declare to their tenants uh, or you know people who store goods at their area that we are actually powered by green energy um to some companies this is very important um that you know that that they i mean there's so much choice for warehouse in singapore you have i think I, it's countless you know the number of the amount of space if i'm a company and i can choose and i actually get to choose a warehouse that is powered by green i think mm -hmm. that to me is very important so uh, for those those companies who have yet to have green i think you probably need to have it soon because more and more um companies are starting to be uh, very wary of this and i think this will be one of the demand for people who want to store uh, their their goods to to say that you know at least i'm storing in a warehouse that is powered by green so given nice. that sorry no please continue yeah i mean given that uh, it doesn't cost you any money uh, it's in fact cheaper, <laughs> cheaper energy um then I, I i don't see you know what you're waiting for you should quickly call a solar developer like samcorp and you know <laughs> sorry i mean uh, like samcorp or anybody else you know really to to um do a site survey and see how you can install green energy at your site you know that there's just uh, too much to gain and nothing to lose for having solar on your roof all right so that means if i'm a logistics client you mentioned a few earlier if um, I engage with SamCorp to come up with a green solution for my building, SamCorp will be the one that's providing all the reporting to clients, you know, like to measure CO2 footprint, cost reductions, etc., etc. Yes, definitely. And we will also provide a monthly report on, you know, how much green has been generated, how much they have consumed, how much carbon emission reduction you have uh, achieved and all that. So that is actually in a monthly reporting. All right, cool. <laughs> We've got a couple of other questions here. Um, this time from Singapore, surprise, surprise. Um, which companies do you get your EV trucks from? Wow, this one I'm not sure. Like. Can I come back to you? Okay, well, I've, I've taken the liberty of putting your LinkedIn profile in the chat. So yeah. don't be surprised oh, yeah. all of a sudden you have a lot of people connecting with you on LinkedIn. Mm, no problem. And. Um, it's something I'm not familiar with, but the question is, does Singapore invest in wave energy generation? No, not that I hear of. Mm. Okay, that's a short and sharp answer. Um, <laughs> and another question is, do you list the companies that you have, that have your warehouse solar farms anywhere on SamCorp's website or your annual report? Uh, sorry, list the companies? Yes, because you mentioned a few just now, I yeah. saw in your presentation. Yeah. But if I wanted to look at the companies that were um, that occupied your space, mm -hmm. um, that had um, solar farms, where mm -hmm. would I find them? Um, there is a national repository uh, done by Ceres. Uh, it's called Solar Repository uh, by Ceres. So there you can see, um, you know, developers like us, we actually submit um, uh, the 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 solar farm that we completed uh in this in this um uh, repository alternatively you can write to me and and you know i can tell you what the companies provided the companies are willing to share that information some companies they they don't want to tell people and they want to keep quiet and so we are bounded by the nda so we can't share so the companies that have agreed uh to share i'm happy to tell you who are the people that have got uh, a solar on their roofs okay and here's a question I'm not sure you can answer as well. It's from Benny Go. Mm -hmm. And Benny's asking is, how do you measure, or what's your solar panel efficiency? Today, the solar panel efficiency is about 21%. Um, uh, yeah, so it has improved. I mean, when I joined solar in, in 2008, um, that time I think it was only 14% miserable. So at least today it has improved by quite a bit. What what's the target or what's the ideal then? Um, people are in the market uh showing possibility of 25, 26 percent. So the, on a research level, so I guess in no time this 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 maybe in the next ten years and uh, we have grown quite a bit. So now I think um you know uh it has reached a a certain peak. The next peak will probably in about ten years. Ten years. Wow. Okay. I was of the impression that it would be sooner than that. 
but I guess you know it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Jen, thank you very much. Like I said, I've put your LinkedIn contact details in the chat here, so don't be surprised if people reach out to you. Thanks oh, for sharing. I'm happy for that. Yeah. I, I, okay. Yeah. I mean, when, when so when you contact me, not necessary. It's it's for a Sam Corp service. I'm happy to share anything about sustainability or or or, or on solar. Uh, just that I'm not so uh, familiar with wave energy, so I'll go and look up about it. <laughs> Okay. Now, understand. Thanks, mm. thanks for that, Jen. And I think our listeners and participants appreciate that as well. So, thanks for the the support today. Uh, interesting presentation. We'll be in touch, and uh, hope mm. you enjoy the rest of Logisim. Thank you, Dr. Raymond. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. You're welcome. Bye, bye. Bye.